What's going on YouTube family? Welcome back to the Jared and James channel. I'm Jared Weiss and if you guys didn't know that must mean that you're not subscribed to the channel so you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, drop a like, then the video, drop a comment, let me know what you guys think of this video. Be sure to interact with the channel as much as you can, help us out. Follow me on all my social media platforms. So, today's video, we're back with another Hard Truths video. I want the truth! The truth? You want the truth? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So like, I actually decided to turn this whole like hard truth idea into like its own little series like, it's, like part of the channel. So like whenever I feel like I'm compelled like, to speak up like, on like one of these like hard truth issues, like whether it's something that, like I feel like isn't being addressed by others, like, like whether because others are like too afraid to, to, to like, talk about the subjects, or whether it's just like something that I believe isn't being told true elsewhere, I could always come on here, drop another hard truths video. I hope you guys enjoy this kind Concept, along with all of our other concepts on the channel. So like, as you guys know, we have multiple types of videos on this channel, like whether it be our sports competition videos, whether it be motivational videos, whether it be like more talking based informational videos, whether it be having guests on the channel to do our sports competition videos, whether it be just me talking, whether it be vertical jump, fitness, holistic health. We have a lot of different types of videos, but like, I feel that like it all falls under the concept of like helping you become your best self possible because that's ultimately the, the goal of like making this channel is to help people with whatever knowledge I have like and like be able to inspire people, entertain them, educate them on like everything that I've been through and like to help people do like whatever their own challenges are. So when it comes to like these like hard truths videos though like the reason why like I feel like it's like, so important like to like make these videos is because as one of my favorite people I come to listen to, Andy Frisella, as he often says, he was like one of the top business entrepreneur podcasters for a while. And like recently he started talking about like a lot of like what's going on in the world, like a lot of like these issues like that other people might refer to as conspiracies. But like he wanted to tell people like what he believes to be the truth as to what's going on. Especially because like, like to talk about like how to achieve success and like inspiring people without like I'm talking about like things and that could potentially be barriers like to getting the opportunities like to, and, to like, achieve success like to achieve healing to achieve all your goals would actually be like disingenuous I feel and like Andy Frisella like I know like he feels the same way too so like for people who know what's going on um, to, to not like talk about like um, these like hard truth subjects wouldn't be alright because you would just be talking about like how, how to achieve success like while ignoring all these like evils that are going on in the world, like and all these like barriers that are out there. Having said that, like it's also important like to not obsess over these things and to not give all of your energy to them, because if you do that, then you're going to become that negative energy and you're going to be embodying the darkness. But, like the best way to find the light is to be the light and to shine light over the darkness. But, like it's also important, like in a lot of cases, to actually acknowledge that like the darkness is there and like to address these topics. But, as I often say, whenever it comes like, to listening to, to any of these like, hard truths people, like whenever it comes like, to listening to, to any of these like, what I believe are like, really smart like, people like, who talk about like, all the like, conspiracies that, that are out there, like, and, as well as like, all, like, all like, the evil that's out there, if you don't take the information and then become the best version of yourself with it, because being your best self like, is actually the ultimate rebellion, if you don't do that, then all this stuff essentially means nothing. So like, you have to take this information and use it to become the best version of yourself. So like, some people like, will just be so focused on like the negative energy without actually doing anything to, to help people like, like solutions. So like, a lot of people can point out problems, but like, if you're not actually giving people like solutions, then like, you're not actually helping the problems. And keep in mind, like, there's definitely I'm, I'm a time and place to just like, talk about the problems like, and to like, address them as to, like, what they are, like, to help people like, be, become more aware as to, like, what, like, the issues are, but, like, most of the time, it's gonna be more important to focus on solutions and to, like, help people, like, with, like, raising their own frequencies and becoming the best versions of themselves. Also, one more thing, before we get into, like, the, the main crux of this video, I know I've been rambling on for a bit, but, like, this is, this is some, like, important stuff I wanted to address as, like, we get more into, like, the second video of, of this Hard Truth series. So, for a while, I was definitely kind of like afraid like to like, speak up like on some of these topics like especially the ones I spoke about like in, in the first video of the series talking about like, like why the mainstream media lies to us and like I definitely hit like a lot of 
hard hitting points, a lot of like controversial points that like shouldn't be controversial, I believe. But like, I ultimately feel though, like, like if you can't handle me being my full, authentic, truth-speaking self, even if you guys don't agree with everything I'm saying, but like, as long as you understand I'm doing it with the best intentions, but like, if you guys can't handle me being my full self, then chances are you're not the type of people like would be like following me anyway. Cause like, in order for me like to gain a following on social media, in order for me to be my best self, I have to be able to be my full, true, authentic self. So that's why it's so important for me to be able to speak up on these issues because otherwise I wouldn't feel like I'm actually going after my true purpose in this world. So now, without further ado, alright, so like today's video is going to be on the hard truth that food is so much more than just calories. It's not just this calories in, calories out idea that like a lot of, like, a lot of people like have been like convinced to believe, but like there's so much more that goes into food and the reason why I want to talk about this video is because a lot of people may think that like they're doing everything possible to be healthy but like without realizing like all like the toxins and like all like the poison that's actually being put into our food supply you could be thinking that like you're doing everything right to be healthy and so like you're exercising you're eating healthy foods but like food could either be nourishment or it could be poison for you so like that's what we're going to talk about in today's video and so one more thing so like I'm gonna be talking a lot about like in this book that I just read. I'm gonna be referencing a lot of like points from this book. This book is brilliant. I learned so much from this. So much truth. So much stuff that like the mainstream media, like the government, probably doesn't want you to know. Like we're gonna, we're gonna keep this mostly positive, most mostly solution based. Like the book is called What Really Makes You Ill by Don Lester and David Parker. A quote from this book I want to start off with is, "An error does not become truth by reason." of multiplied propagation, nor does truth become error because nobody sees it. It's a quote by Mahatma Gandhi. So like just because a million people, all the experts quote unquote, tell you that something is the truth and if you question it, you're a conspiracy theorist, that doesn't make it true. And just because one person is telling them the truth, but like just because no one believes it, doesn't make that a lie. So also like for all the people out there like who want to say like, why should we trust you? over all these experts. I'm not saying that like you should be outsourcing your trust for me. You, everyone has to do their own independent research that's not biased, that's not been influenced by quote unquote fact checkers who um, definitely aren't unbiased. Um, as well as like mainstream media which as I uh, I'm already addressed is not unbiased. And also, so like one reason why I'm hoping you guys at the very least are, um, are like open like to listening to me. Not saying that like you have to believe everything I say but like do your own research because a lot of the um, a lot of like the research out there like, um, has been controlled by vested interests as I learned about in this book and like meanwhile like for all you guys that come to challenge me on, um, on all the controversial stuff I've been talking about do your own research 700 plus page book just finish this I listen, um, I listen to tons of podcasts every day from people who, um, who haven't been corrupted so if you guys want to argue with me do your own research it's, tr it's truly independent and then at that point, if you guys want to debate me, that's fine. I'm totally open to it. Once again, as I would say, live and let live. That's what I'm all about. But like, just don't impose your belief system onto me. Don't make me take any pharmaceuticals that like, I don't believe are good for me. Don't make me conform to your lifestyle that I don't believe is good for me. Live and let live. That's what it's all about. So, let's get into today's topic at hand. We're going to start with GMO foods which have been promoted as being this way like, of like saving the environment, quote unquote, as well as um, this way of increasing food production, which I've learned about is not true at all, which I always knew about wasn't true. But like one thing that like the authors in this book talk, uh, um, talk a lot about is how GMO foods do not have a, a identical chemical composition of the foods they claim to, to resemble. They have a lot of toxic chemicals and pesticides that get sprayed on these foods such as glyphosate which, which has been linked to autism which has been linked to plenty of digestive issues which is why a lot of people like can't tolerate grains anymore and also these GMO foods don't actually increase the yields they actually end up decreasing the food production and one quote I want to read from this section of the book the techniques of genetic engineering are different from those used in eugenics programs but they are both a result of the claim by certain groups of people that they have the right to use science to create all kinds of experiments, including those that can manipulate nature 
and alter the characteristics of living organisms. So, that's a pretty scary thought, but like, eugenics, that's like a whole nother topic. But, but like, anyways, this idea that like nature could be altered in order to like to produce like some like result like like these elites want, such as when like we end up with like these, these like microplastics in our water, we end up with pesticide laden foods and like GMO foods, and then like when like all of our hormones end up changing, we end up acting differently, we end up weaker, sicker, more dependent. So like once again, the solution: don't eat GMO foods. Go organic whenever possible because GMO foods are gonna be laden with all these toxic ingredients that like you don't want in your gut, in your body. So like when it comes to food and like when it comes to like, it's, like choosing what food is good for you, so like it does it contribute like to like making up your cells, to making up your body composition, to helping out with with body metabolism, to helping out with all the processes that, and, like the body needs in order to fully function and to fully be optimal as a human being. So like if a food doesn't contribute to any of that, it's essentially poison, as stated in, in the book. So like, think about it, when you eat a bag of Doritos, can you actually see that like um, contributing to making up muscle cells, to making up all the cells of the body? Do you see that like actually allowing the body like, to function as a whole? I don't think so. Once again though, this doesn't mean that like you have to be as strict as I am like with my diet. This doesn't mean that, like you can never eat anything that's not organic, anything that isn't perfect or whatever like because like as I've said in the past there's no perfect diet also like because also like everyone's needs are different, all of our activity levels are different, all of our systems function differently because like we've all been exposed to, to different levels of toxins, we've all had different lives so therefore also that's also like in the same reason why some people can eat something and get horribly sick whereas other people can eat it and be totally fine because We've all been exposed to different levels of toxins. Our bodies, therefore, are able like, to expel and eliminate certain toxins at different capacities. That's also like, the reason why a few years ago I was not able to have like so many foods I'm able to have now because my body wasn't able like to like detoxify properly, and my body wasn't able like to, like eliminate like whenever I would eat like the, in certain foods. So like therefore now I'm able like to tolerate like a lot more foods. And for those of you who know, like I've always, um, I've always tried my best to treat my body like a temple. But like I didn't know about a lot of these toxin exposures for for many years. And but like now I'm aware of it all, so now I'm taking responsibility over it. Do I recommend everyone should do the same? Because like when you don't know about something, it's not your responsibility. But like once you know about it, then it's your responsibility, and it's like take control over it and do your best to make the changes that are necessary. Next, quote I want to read with regards to the whole GMO process. The genetic engineering and associated tissue culture processes are imprecise and highly mutagenic, leading to unpredictable changes in the DNA, proteins, and chemical composition of the resulting GM crop. So therefore, and moreover, herbicide-tolerant crops have been developed by agrochemical firms specifically to depend upon agrochemicals and have extended the market for these chemicals. So therefore, once again, you're creating a problem you're creating something and to quote unquote fix the problem, which is ultimately going to lead to more health issues and more problems. So like, GMO foods, not good. GMO foods have a lot of potential for, for danger. And like when they have been studied, they've, um, they've definitely been able like, to induce a lot of health issues. Moreover, coming back to the main topic of today's video, which is that food is so much more than just calories and, and energy. So like the whole topic of like malnutrition, so like one myth when it comes to malnutrition is that like it's just like from, from lack of calories. But like this actually isn't true because people who are overweight can also be malnourished. So the WHO, one of those corrupt three-letter organizations which I've spoken about in the past, talks about the idea of using ready-to-use foods such as high-energy biscuits, that's what they're called. What? Which don't really have much nutritional value at all. So they're made with wheat flour, hydrogenated vegetable shortening, sugar, soy flour, invert syrup, high fructose corn syrup, skim milk powder, sodium and ammonium, bicarbonates, salt. Bro, what are you talking about, man? So like, it should definitely be super clear from hearing these ingredients. Like, these aren't gonna make starving people any healthier. When someone is like super starving in some like third world country, of course, 
ha having some having anything to eat like will definitely solve the immediate issue. But, like they could eat all that and still be malnourished. They're still gonna suffer like from the same diseases that they're coming from the malnutrition. So once again, that's another simplification of an idea that it's like much more complex. So like just eating food that has no nutritional value, that's just like a compilation of ingredients and they're all essentially toxic is not going to correct the issue of malnutrition because like we need nutrients, we need micronutrients, we need macronutrients all in the correct proportions in order to serve as like fuel like for all of our bodily processes and to, and to function optimally and moreover the whole fortification of certain foods does not lead to the same nutritional outcomes of eating whole foods for instance like which is like the same reason why most supplements don't actually contribute to health because like supplements like are usually taking synthetic vitamins which have essentially been like chemically formed into this capsule in order to as they claim solve nutritional deficiencies but like the problem like when you do this is that like you're taking the natural nutrients away from from the cofactors that like they would come alongside in nature so like for instance Calcium and vitamin D are needed in certain ratios in order for the body to optimally absorb these vitamins. So like when you just take one pill of one vitamin, you're going to be increasing the need for another vitamin. And the same goes for like magnesium, which a lot of people like happen to be deficient in, especially based on like the modern American diet and like the way like the soil has been depleted. So like when you take one supplement, or like when you take one vitamin in isolation, you're gonna be increasing the need for another vitamin, increasingly for another vitamin. So like I'm gonna try like put up like in this one chart that like Victor from Biogenics once showed me, which was actually a really good explanation as to like why taking vitamins in isolation most of the time is not gonna be promoting health, and like most of the time it's, it's actually gonna be creating more deficiencies. So therefore, what's the solution? To get your nutrients from whole foods, if you are going to take any supplement, like make sure it's like of the highest quality. It's definitely more than possible to get all of your nutrients from whole foods, from whole food sources. And as a result, you're not going to be deficient in any nutrients. Also, one other really good quote I want to add in was from Herbert Shelton, which is that no man is so confirmed in falsehood as he who has been educated into it. So like, for, for anyone who wants to say to me like, how could all these experts be wrong? It doesn't take a lot like for an idea and a lie to be spread easily into the whole health system and be indoctrinated into millions of people. So this doesn't mean I'm like everyone did on it. So now, another quote I want to share from the book is, the emphasis by the medical establishment on the energy value of foods is largely based on the mechanistic view of the body that promotes the idea that the human requirement for food is analogous to a vehicle's requirement for fuel. But this is a false analogy. The human body is not mechanistic in nature, although there is a need to consume foods that provide the necessary materials for conversion into energy, the human body is a living organism whose complex life-sustaining processes bear no resemblance whatsoever to the purely mechanical functions of machines including those produced using the most advanced technologies. The fundamental purpose of eating is to provide the body with necessary materials to support all of its processes, not merely in those that involve the production of energy. Substances consumed as food should therefore contain those ne necessary materials more commonly referred to as nutrients. Going along the same lines, food is so much more than just energy, it's so much more than calories. It's essential for nourishment, it could be a source of happiness, it could be a source of social life. So humans are so much more than just like these like mechanistic things. Like humans actually have thoughts, we have consciousness, we have the ability to manifest our own realities as we've spoken about in the past. We need micronutrients, we need macronutrients, as I mentioned before, to ultimately um, fuel these processes. But like, it's not just a matter of calories in, calories out. Let me pose this question. Do you guys really think that like, if you add 2,000 calories w worth of Oreos every day, as opposed to 2,000 calories worth of whole foods, natural foods, fruits, vegetables, gra um, grass-fed meats, which person do you think will ultimately uh, live the more optimal life? Which one will get sick less often? Which one like would have like the need to get sick less often? Because sickness is just by his way of detoxing. Which one would be able to perform better as an athlete, 
in their workouts, have more energy to complete whatever it is they're trying to do. I think we all know the answer to that one. Not the guy eating the Oreos for 2,000 calories worth. I don't eat Oreos. You don't eat Oreos? The way you break them open, you're... <laughs> Moreover, food additives, by comparison, are inherently toxic due to the nature of their ingredients, but the consumption of foods that contain additives may not immediately produce an effect because the additive may be at a sufficiently low level that the body is able to process and expel it. However, the ability to tolerate toxins will differ according to each individual and their state of health. So like as I've spoken about in the past, there's many sources of toxins in our current lifestyles, in our current environments, whether knowingly or unknowingly, putting them into our body, injecting them, pharmaceuticals, etc, etc. So one more thing I wanted to add. I find it extremely disturbing that like, we live in a country where essentially you have to pay more for food that hasn't been poisoned Organic food costs a lot more than the non-organic food, and non-organic food these days is essentially food that's been poisoned by pesticides and glyphosate, etc. And so, like, something that, that was actually really funny. So, like, a few weeks ago, when I was hanging out with James and his brother, so, like, that night, like, we actually took a trip, like, to this one grocery store to buy some, like, fruits, like, to eat. But, like, anyways, like, James also ends up buying um, this one like um, super spicy like ramen thing but like if you look at the back of it it was essentially all artificial ingredients all once again nothing wrong with uh, having something um, that isn't totally perfect once in a while but like I just found it like to be like really funny that like all of us like were like reading the ingredients label and it was essentially a game of like find the one real ingredient because the whole thing was all like fake so like a lot of food out there is fully fake, been fully poisoned. Once again, it was just like this fun challenge that like James wanted to do. And also, like, thankfully, his body was healthy enough to the point where like, he could handle taking a few bites out, like his digestive system like, was efficient enough at like, getting rid of the poison that he's able like, to tolerate that. But yeah, I just wanted to add in that little anecdote. So, anyways, I hope that after listening to this video, and trust me, I could go on forever about, about all these topics. But like, hopefully after watching this video, you guys realize that food is about so much more than just calories. It's making up the cells that, that allow you to function properly, that, that allow your muscles to grow, that, that allow um, your brain to be fueled, that allow your mind to think clear thoughts. And so, if you guys don't trust me, do your own research. And hey, if you guys want to keep eating toxic garbage, go ahead and do that. As long as you're not imposing that onto me. As long as you're not trying to make me eat the bugs, as long as you're not trying to make me eat Bill Gates' lab-grown meat or um, GMO vegetables or whatnot. But hey, that's up to you. So, anyways, hopefully this video provided um, some real solutions. Hopefully it gave you some knowledge on how to properly fuel yourself. Hopefully you guys are motivated um, to eat more organic, natural, whole foods. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to get your nutrients in today. Let me know what you guys think of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Anyways, make sure to subscribe to the channel, drop a like, drop a comment. And as you guys know, I'm definitely gonna make sure to balance out like whenever I go into like these hard truth videos, I don't like them to be like too negative. Because like sometimes like it's definitely possible like for them like to head in that direction just because of like the nature of the topics that I'm not, like I'm talking about. So like I'm always gonna be bouncing these out with like the more inspirational videos, as well as like the incredibly fun videos, such as like the competition videos sports videos, the workout videos, so like, we have it all on this channel, so I hope you guys enjoy getting a little taste of truth today, catch you guys in the next video, peace!